Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, eight problems I've completed on computing the income from house property. In this video, one ninth problem I'm going to explain. It's a lengthy problem consisting of two parts. So complete video, only one problem. So before starting the ninth problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. If you want the perfect knowledge, always follow my uh, guidelines, my suggestions. Be thorough about the theory. If you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject income tax for the assessment year 23-24. Watch the initial videos on income from house property. Be perfect about the provisions. How to compute the income from house property. Then one after the other, all the videos you should watch. Then only you can be able to get the complete command. Otherwise, randomly, if you watch the videos and without understanding the theory, if you come to problems, you may not be able to understand. You may not get the full advantage from these videos. So before explaining the ninth problem, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Now, see the ninth problem. Sri Atmakaran Reddy owns two houses. Their municipal valuation are 30,000 and 48,000. That means the SSC Atmakaran Reddy, he is having first house MRV, municipal rental value 30,000. Second house MRV 48,000. The first house is let out for residential purpose for 46,000 per annum. And the second house is let out to a company for its registered office 54,000 per annum. Income Tax Act says whether the house is let out for residential purpose or for commercial purpose. No difference at all. So here one house is given for residential, the other house is given for commercial purpose. Under the agreement, 50% of municipal taxes are to be borne by tenant. Again, Income Tax Act provision has been given. Municipal taxes will be allowed as deduction only if it is paid by the owner. If it is paid by the tenant, not allowed. So here agreement is 50% borne by owner and 50% will be borne by the tenant. So only 50% will be allowed as deduction. Now, he claims the following deductions. For the first house, municipal taxes 3000. But 3000 will not be allowed. 50% will be allowed. 3000, 50%, 1500. Repairs ignore, not allowed. Brokerage paid to get the tenant, not allowed. For the second house, municipal taxes 5,000, but only 50% will be allowed. Repairs ignored, not allowed. Rent deed registration charges, not allowed. Annual charges, not allowed. Interest on loan taken to purchase the second house 30,000, but only 10,000 is paid so far. So interest on loan is there only on the second house, not on the first house. It will be allowed as deduction under section 24B. The total interest will be allowed as deduction whether paid or not paid. So if it is, uh, it is allowed as deduction even on due basis also. So 30,000 is the total interest, complete 30,000 will be allowed. Arrears of rent received from first house 15,000 which was not assessed earlier. The first house, there was an arrear of rent which is received during the current year and it was not assessed to tax in the last year. Now it is taxable in first house in computing the income from first house the second house was vacant for three months so there is a vacancy allowance for the second house compute to the income from house property first of all the house is not governed by rent control act because standard rent is not given so adjusted year will not required. <coughs> here mr atma karan Raddi, computation of income from house property for assessment year 23 24 first house Gross annual value, less municipal taxes, net annual value, less deductions under section 24, 24A, 24B, then income from house property. That is the usual procedure. But in this problem, the arrears of rent received for the first house will be added. Right? That is the new point. First, we begin our calculations with GAV, gross annual value. ERV, expected rental value is higher of the following two. MRV, FRV. MRV of the first house, 30,000, given in the first line. FRV is not given. Fair rental value not at all given in the problem. Put a dash. The higher is 30,000. ERV we got. 
Now ARV. Actual rental value is given 46,000. No vacancy allowance for the first house. Right? So 46,000 is the ARV. Now GAV is higher of the following ERV or ARV, whichever is higher. 30,000 or 46,000. So we got GAV 46,000 starting point. Municipal taxes are given 3,000. But in the problem it is given 50% will be borne by the owner. So only 50% will be allowed. 50% of 3,000, 1,500. So NAV 44,500. 30% will be allowed as standard deduction. So 30% of 44,500, 13,350. There is no interest on loan on the first house. Put a dash. The so total deduction 13,350. 31,150 is the income of the first house for the current year. Apart from that, some arrears of rent are received which was not assessed to, to tax earlier. Now it is taxable. So arrears of rent received 15,000. It is not assessed to, to tax earlier. So now deduction will be given. Standard deduction, 30% of rent received. So 30% of 15,000, 4,500 will be allowed. So 10,500 uh, 10, will be the income of that arrears of rent received. That is taxable. So total income from first house property is 41,650. That's all. First house computation completed. Now I'm coming to the second house. The second house again, Computation of income from house property, second house. Same format will drop. Gross annual value less municipal taxes, NAV deductions will give then income or loss, whatever we get. So first of all, we calculate gross annual value. For GAV, uh, first of all, ERV is higher of the following two, MRV and FRV. MRV is given 48,000. But FRV, fair rental value not given in the problem. So 48,000 is ERV. Now GAV. Annual rent is given 54,000 per annum and the second house is let out to a company for its registered office at 54,000 per annum. So what is the monthly rent? Monthly rent 54,000 divided by 12, 4,500 per month. Now ARV is equal to actual rent minus vacancy allowance. In this problem it is given in the last line. The second house was vacant for three months. So three months vacant. Huh. So the second house is vacant for three months. So there is a vacancy allowance for three months. So annual rent minus vacancy allowance. 54,000 is the annual rent minus vacancy allowance is three months and monthly rent is 4,500. So 4,500 into three, 13,500 subtract ARV is equal to 40,500. This is adjusted ARV because we have deducted the vacancy allowance. So adjusted ARV 40,500. Since adjusted ARV is less than ERV, ERV how much we got here? 48,000. ERV 48,000, adjusted ARV is 40,500 due to vacancy allowance. Then in that case, adjusted ARV is the GAV. So adjusted ARV is GAV 50,500. So here I have taken 50,500. From that, deduct the municipal taxes 50% of 5000. It is given 5000 municipal taxes. So 2500 subtract 38000 is the net annual value NAV. From that, standard deduction 30% of this 38000 will get 11400. And interest on loan for the second house is 30000, but only 10000 was paid. In ignore 10000. The total interest, whether paid or not, will be fully allowed as deduction. Interest on loan 30,000. Total 41,400 deduct will get loss from house property 3,400. That means from the first house, he is having income from house property 41,650. Second house, there is a loss from house property 3,400. Now the SSC can set off the loss from the profit because there is a provision inter, uh, inter head set off. Intra head set off, sorry. Intra head means within the same head. One source is having income, the other source is having loss. So here, income from house property, house number one is 41,650 and loss from house two is 3,400. Deduct the loss, ultimately income from house property is 38,250. That's all. This is the end of problem number nine. So far, I have completed nine problems. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.